Hi y'all and welcome back to my channel. And I absolutely love for me that the fact that this new dress that I'm wearing is just one giant piece of lace and I'm literally wearing nothing but a bra and panties underneath so that I don't have a heat stroke while I'm filming. If you're interested in seeing me uh, in said bra and panties, by all means, feel free to go join my OnlyFans. But here on the YouTubes, we are gonna keep it G-rated. I may not make a lot of ad revenue, but I would like to hold on to at least the small amount that I do make. Thank you very much. But today, obviously, uh, last month, because of sorts of traveling and that sort of situation, I did not get a hits and misses out. I didn't really have a, it wasn't a bad month, but it wasn't necessarily one where I was feeling any sort of significant way of, ooh, look at this, I don't like it, or ooh, look at this, I love it. It just kind of ended up not happening. If you've seen Get Ready With Me's, I went to visit family in Washington. Then last week, I went and visited family in Louisiana. After this week is over, my butt is going back to Virginia. It's just kind of a whole thing. So, today, we are going to be doing a month of hits and misses, and that is going to be for May. I am now 31, yay me. But I have accumulated enough products to actually talk about and actually have sort of a viable opinion on. So in order to not make this 20,000 minutes long, we're just gonna go right on in. And obviously, in every single one of these videos, we are going to start off with La Musica. Uh, this month, May? I would have to say has sort of been a month of self-exploration, a month of self-discovery, you might say. Um, some of you have talked to me on Snapchat, some of you know on Twitter, some of you know all the whatever. I have been sort of on a journey of finding me, you know, we're finding your know, gender expression, we're finding your sexuality, hopefully that word doesn't get me demonetized, and I'm also sort of finding, like, myself in, like, religion and stuff like that, and that's been something that I've been really enjoying, and so, actually, this, uh, both of these songs I found on TikTok, you'd like to see me, uh, embarrass myself on that pl platform, I will leave that down below, I am absolutely a addicted to it. I'm addicted to watching it. I'm addicted to making TikToks. Literally, I'll be sitting in my room and be like, have nothing to film, nothing to do. And I'm like, I'm going to put on a full beat just so I can film a stupid TikTok video. But anyway, the first song, which has really sort of like <clears throat> found itself within my soul is uh, my mother's, Sa I am my mother's savage daughter, which I understand that there is a bit of controversy around that song because apparently the original lady who composed it, uh, meant for it to not be like poppy or for it to be traditionally pretty. It's meant to be a bit more just raw. So I don't want to take away from that. I will leave link down below the original as well as the version that I'm familiar with. But this song has just been, I have like been just playing it on excessively repeat. It just really just like I feel like I'm my mother's savage daughter. I'm like, yeah, witchcraft, woo. It's kind of been a whole mood with me. I really, really like it. Um, I'm actually probably going to try to do a TikTok today <laughs> with that as the audio, as well as another TikTok I'm going to try to do today with an audio of this song. I cannot remember the name of the gentleman who did this. I will leave his name here as well as links and everything like that. But this is the song Valhalla Calling, which the first time I heard it, it was just like I said, I was scrolling through TikTok and you know how they have all those little audios. And I heard the audio and I was just like, I need this in my life. I, I, I want more than the little like 30, 15, 60 second whatever from TikTok. I need the whole thing in my life. And luckily the guy who posted that was the dude who was singing it. So I went on to his YouTube. He does a lot of fantastic, just really visceral Viking music and Norse and awesomeness and mythology and shiz. And that's another one that's really kind of fueled my spirituality and helped me kind of like with me and like my whole like paganism and stuff like that. I've been trying to figure out like who I gravitate toward and this has kind of been I've been finding myself really gravitating toward the Norse area of like paganism. So if any of y'all have any information or you practice or you whatever, I am a babby. I'm a very little babby pagan so I don't know a huge amount of everything but this song has just been really I just 
it just really songs like that and like medieval folk music. Uh, my cousin actually just found a uh, Googling over here. She's over here, emotional support animal with my cat. And it's Peyton Parrish, I was correct. And then apparently there's a metal version that I need to listen to, but this one is just more just like, <sighs> just striding and Valhalla and Asgard and Odin and just yeah, all that kind of stuff, which I'm really vibing with right now. Okay, let's talk about things, makeup. I've got some skincare. I've got some eyeshadow palettes that y'all probably saw coming if you keep up with my reviews. If I remember, which most of the time I don't, I'm trying to get better, I will leave reviews and videos using said product so y'all can get like a better, more in-depth discussion review about it. And the first of which, which recently I have done a get ready with me as well as a review of the Kaleidos Makeup Club Nebula Palette collaboration with Angelica and Nykvist. I love this palette. This palette is my ever-loving shiznit. You've got the beautiful space age 1920s intergalactic Great Gatsby vibe, which I mean, I need to somehow make that an aesthetic for myself because absolute perfection. And obviously you open this bad boy up and it is not lacking in the beauty department. I just love this thing. I love every single matte. I love basically every single shimmer. We did talk about how this one was a little bit kind of sheer, a little bit more of a wash, which one of y'all did suggest using a tacky base. And this one's kind of supposed to be like a, I don't know, a topper, but y'all know I love, I just, I just love absolutely everything about this palette. I honestly need to use this shade and this shade together and then go up all in some beautiful blueness. Y'all know I am a huge, huge, huge fan and advocate for Kaleidos makeup. I honestly am really freaking bummed and a little bit disappointed that this palette isn't permanent because it's just so good. And I also kind of have, I understand Kaleidos is an indie makeup company, but I'm like, please make us permanent products because when they do do things like this, they sell out like crazy and a lot of people aren't able to get their hands on it. I know a bunch of y'all commented on my review as well as my get ready with me that you tried on like every single restock. It had three restocks and a lot of y'all weren't able to get your hands on it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous color story. Everything about it is formulated immaculately absolutely still haven't been able to put it down. I actually used uh, this shade uh, today, right here. I used it in collaboration with my Natasha Denona Love Palette, but I've just been reaching for this thing over and over and over again. Now, obviously, if we talk about a palette that I loved, clearly we need to talk about a palette that I didn't love. Also reviewed this shiz. And this is the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette, which you open it up and I'm just all like, F me up, this is my shiz. And I will say, the uh, four mattes that you get are absolutely stunning. I have reached for this thing for those said mattes, but that's about it. This palette is majority shimmers and the majority of the shimmers are formulated absolutely abysmally. I cannot tell you how frustrated I am with Melt with every time they release a new palette, they've got to do something like, ooh, but we're trying a new fantastical way to formulate shimmers. I mean, every single palette they do, they're trying some kind of tomfoolery with their shimmers. I'm like, just go back to Gemini, take that shimmer formula and transport it into this. But for some reason, they are absolutely opposed to doing that because every palette, they're just like in these new amazing formulas that are gonna shift 3,000 ways on your eyes. And in reality, they do buck kiss on your lids because you can't get the ding dang things onto your brush, out of the pans to put on your lid. And I'm sorry if you're a company that charges $58 for this shiz, I'll be okay. I mean, all right, maybe like one or two shades might be a dud, but I mean, all of these shimmers are basically pitiful. I mean, I almost went on a whole, I can't remember, was it a review? I think it was like a half roast where I was just like, I expect so much more from them because I have, you all know this. Melt Cosmetics has basically been the replacement brand of KVD. For me, you know, they're the new alternative, edgy, gothic whateverness that I love. But then 
when they do stuff like this, when I've got like so many other, I got the Rust one, I got Gemini, I got the, the 17 one, I got the She's in Parties, and they're all beautiful, and they're all lovely, and they all have shimmers that work. And then they give me this shiz, and they give me this beautiful, cool toned majesty color story, and then they're like, well, we're gonna stick a wrench in these plans, and we're gonna make these shimmers the dumbest things you've ever used, especially Kali and Mary Jane. The, the name, the eyeshadow name for the palette is pitiful. It's chunky and nasty. It don't want to stick on your lid. I had to go and do another palette and get another shimmer to finish the look that I did with this so I could do the review. And it's just, I'm sorry, this just falls so short. The best part about this is the fancy, fancy packaging. And that means they're pulling a Too Faced and I am not okay with that. Okay, let's take a break from eyeshadow palettes and let's talk a little bit about uh, skincare. Obviously you all know that skincare is disgustingly important to me. I absolutely love a glowy, healthy complexion. And as such, we've got products that we love. I was using the Tatcha, the rice powder, normal, and I had bought several Sephora VIB sales ago with the 20% off because uh, next year I am not gonna be rouge. I don't plan on being rouge ever again, but while I was rouge, I decided to take advantage and get the Tatcha the Rice Polish Deep, which is one of my end all be all everyday cleansing, exfoliant, whatever. I have a very intense over exaggerated skincare routine. So I double cleanse. I'll use like a gel or a jelly cleanser. Right now I'm using one from Clean Beauty at Walmart. And then I'll use something like this afterwards to really, you know, get in there and slough away everything. And it works well for my skin. I know a couple of y'all are like, stop exfoliating your skin. Apparently my sister-in-law is the same way and we're just like, it feels so good. But I find that this is nice and gentle enough while still being like, it's obviously deeper than the normal one. And I feel it does a really good job at really cleaning away and making my face just feel clean and healthy. This is the second or third time that I've repurchased this, which says something because this shiz is not cheap. And y'all know I do not like recommending super expensive things needlessly because if there's anything we've learned, it's that price point doesn't necessarily mean quality. And not everybody has the same sort of budget to blow on bougie bougie packaging, fancy fancy rice polish cleansers. But with using this one, I've noticed that my skin is just more even, it feels more toned, there isn't as much redness. It's just a really nice time had all around when I use this cleanser. But on to the topic of exfoliation. You know your girl, I do my cleansing and then every two to three to four days I do something like an enzyme peel or the Dr. Brandt microdermabrasion. You know, I try to break it up so that I'm not constantly exfoliating my face because that is not good. Well, I was going through, we were in Virginia for like a little bit, I can't remember why or what for, and I was going through like my, not my, my extras drawer? I don't know, it was a bin that had a lot of shiz in it, and I remember that I had this product, which is the Ole Henriksen Transform Transforming Walnut Scrub. Now I know Kylie Jenner got in a whole lot of trouble for releasing a walnut scrub in her skincare line, and I'm like, this is Ole Henriksen. This is a very well-known, very reputable skincare company that charges a lot of money, and they're giving us a walnut scrub. Obviously, I'm the moron that bought it, but I just find it funny that after there's been all this like talk of like, how it's not good for you, and we've got like the St. Ives one, and that's like one big giant tragedy, but these companies are still like, walnuts. And then also from the same same company, once again, Ole Henriksen. This is the Truth Moment of Truth 2-in-1 Polishing Sugar Mask. This is sugar, honey, and pomegranate seed power. Uh, for any of you who have been with me for an extended period on my channel, um, you may recall the time period in my skincare routine where I was using a sugar scrub on my skin every day. And every day since I stopped doing that, I thank the skincare gods that my face literally just hasn't detached from my skull and run off because I've abused it so much. So I'm not sure what possessed me to be like, 
I should try these again, right? Because, I mean, I must admit, maybe it's like my OCD or my, I don't even know what, but like I get a certain amount, I get my jollies on using like exfoliating products where you can literally like feel it and you're like, ah, yes, scour through the first one, two, three, four layers of my skin. I am fresh like a snake shedding. I am a newborn baby. And maybe I thought this would do it for me. And so I would use it like, I was like, oh, I'll use it every, you know, two weeks or so. Well, using this every two weeks or so, and even this, cause I would kind of like, I would see how this one worked. I mean, I do like this one better than this one, but at the same time, what I noticed when I was using these products is that this section right here, which is one of my trouble areas, it gets dry, it has texture, and I had, and I could, I, I know my skin. I, I like to think that I have a good level of communication with my skin. And I noticed that I started to develop bumps. Like we're not talking like, oh, here's a little bump here. Here's a red raised bumps that were clearly obvious and clearly something that isn't typically on my skin. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself and I'm like, all right, well, the only thing that you've changed in your routine is adding these really abrasive uh, exfoliators into that routine. So even though it felt good while I was using it and I was like, oh, Yes, all the dead skin cells exfoliate. It did things that were worse for my skin in the long run by creating this horrible caravan of just, like it was raised, it was red. Like I said, we're not talking like a little bit. And it took me, this is the one thing that's important about skincare that I feel like people sometimes don't understand. When you F with your skin and you do something that your skin likes, if you stop doing it, it's not like the next day your skin's like, oh, thank you, I forgive you. No, you gotta pamper, you gotta baby, you gotta treat it with so much love, and it'll take about two to three weeks to go away. So after I'd done all this exfoliation and had these wonderful, nasty, gnarly, whatever bumps on me, it took me two to three weeks to be like, I'm using only the gentlest of skincare upon you, please, please leave. And after said two, three weeks, I was like, huh, I think my skin, you would have seen on Snapchat. I was like, I think I'm finally healed. I think we're through out of the woods, not into the frying pan. And it just reminded me why I don't need to use these products. I feel even bad. Like I was thinking like, oh, I can give them to my friend Cameron and JT because they have like oilier skin and they like really exfoliating, but I feel bad because I'm like, you know, these may be products from like a skincare brand, but just because they're from a skincare brand doesn't mean they're actually in the long run, good for your skin? If that makes any sense, I don't know. So I know what I'm gonna do with them. I'm gonna stick to my lighter, nice, delicate, beautiful skin enhancing exfoliating. We're not gonna take walnut shells and sugar and sloughing it on my skin no more. Okay, let's talk about a newer, this has actually been sort of a joint recommendation from several of y'all. Y'all know that as the environment loving, the pagan witch that I am, I am trying to uh, lessen my carbon footprint, which is probably really freaking big at this point. But I have been trying to not use makeup remover wipes. And I was like, guys, please help me. What do I do? And so many of you were like, I need you to buy a makeup eraser. And a lot of you were also like, I need you to try the Good Molecules um, Cleansing Balm, which was a product that they had actually sent to me quite a while ago. And I'd used it as like just a normal everyday cleanser and I didn't like it. So I kind of put it in the, the I don't know drawer. And so several of y'all were like, the Good Molecules Cleansing Balm. And I'm like, I have that. And my mother bought me for my birthday a cute little uh, makeup eraser set at Costco. And I tried it for the first time. And let me tell you, my skin honestly felt the freshest it's ever felt after having removed makeup. You know, usually I use the Neutrogena makeup remover wipes and I'm like, we're feeling a little tight. We're feeling a little dry. I need to put some moisturizer on. With the cleansing balm, which I just took a little bit, rubbed it between my whatevers and just 
just did this all over it. And a part of me was afraid that when I got to like my eyes, I was like, oh no, what if I do it and it burns my eyes? Didn't burn nothing, didn't do diddly. So this is the cleansing balm. This is the instant cleansing balm, which I am now an absolute fan of. It comes with a little, I hope I brought the scooper back from Louisiana. It'd be somewhere, right? This is what it looks like here. You just scoop a little bit out. I warm it between my fingers and just slather that shiz all over my face. And then you take your cute little uh, makeup eraser right here. Mine looks nasty and gunky and gnarly because I haven't cleaned it yet. But this just makes it, it's just, I mean, this feels like a baby's butt, so there is that. And apparently like this side here is for like removing makeup and then this side here is for exfoliation. I did not know that until after. I was just kind of taking bits of it and being like, Bleh! But it made it so much easier and I felt so much better after I like finished taking off my makeup. I was like, ha, huh, I feel fresh. I feel clean. I feel ready to take on the world. So after like just one use, I was an absolute convert. Like it was amazing how this thing worked because this eyeliner, well not this one, this is the KVD Trooper liner, but oftentimes I use the Wet n Wild, uh, the waterproof. One of y'all sent me one and recommended it to me. And it's probably the closest dupe I found for the KVD Trooper liner. But the Wet n Wild one is waterproof. And like you just, you just wet this and then you just, you just, just Gently dab, 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 and it just took it away. And I had, like I said on Snapchat, I was like, I'm kind of uh, concerned about this because I put a lot of makeup on my face. And I do, you know, bright and crazy and whatever colorfulness, and I was a little bit concerned. I didn't know if this was gonna, was gonna be able to come to the task of taking this beat off. And it did. It did it absolutely beautiful. Um, I want to make an order from Good Molecules. I want to get another one of the cleansing balm, and I want to get two of my serums because... I am absolutely in love. I have, I'm really torn because I have some makeup remover wipes left that I'm like, what do I do with them? I don't just want to throw them away. Maybe I can find another purpose for them. I mean, using them, even if it's not for makeup, is still the problem. If y'all guys have any ideas or whatever that I should with all this abundance of leftover makeup remover wipes, please to let me know. But as for the makeup eraser and the cleansing balm, absolute wins for me. I'm actually really excited to use it to get rid of this makeup. I'm just, like I said, absolute convert. Used it once, came out with my mom, and I was like, behold, I'm never going to use a makeup wipe on my face again. Then we might as well end on another positive. This here is a palette that I'm pretty sure the get ready with me that I use this for is out. If so, I will leave it linked down below. This was actually sent to me by one of you all. This is the Rip My Youth palette from Spoiled Cosmetics, which I actually checked their site and they've got some really cute shiz and I'm like, I like that palette. That's a pretty color combination. But this one they sent to me and it is this beautiful treasure trove of all sorts of pinks and purples. In the Get Ready With Me, I was super, super impressed with the pigmentation, the blendability. Some of these darker colors are dif more difficult to formulate and for this being the first palette I've ever tried from this company. I was really freaking impressed. I've used it again multiple times. I've found that I love this purple shade here. This is a really well formulated black. Love this highlighter right here. It's kind of duochrome prismatic. Also use it as an inner corner highlight. Have not touched either of the pressed glitters. They're probably just going to sit there for the rest of their life until they die. Which you all know I am not um, a fan and I am not well versed in the use of pressed glitters. It's just not my thing. I have used glitter uh, mixed in with my highlight before, but I have not taken it anywhere near my eyes. I know glitter has been a kind of a taboo thing within the beauty community for a while. And now a lot of companies and a lot of brands are trying to make pressed glitters a mainstream everyday thing. But everything else about this palette, I absolutely love. That's a gorgeous shimmer. That's a gorgeous shimmer. This is really pretty and very unique. It's like a gray, purpley, silvery pigment. It's really, really pretty. I've actually used it once and I just kind of did this like, I was playing around and I did this kind of liner thing with it almost and I really, 
really liked how that turned out. So thank you absolutely so much for gifting me this palette. I've really enjoyed it and it has now become one of my favorite like pinky purpley toned palettes. Well, there we have it for the month of May, hits and misses. I actually felt good. I mean, I didn't feel good about not posting one like the month before last, but I felt really good about the products that I had to talk about here today because I felt like there was enough to justify a video. I always feel bad if like I've got like three things and I'm like, hey. And I really did have wonderful experiences. I just felt like this was a good time. So I don't feel bad about missing a month. Would love to hear what y'all have to say about the products I talked about down below. Would also love to hear about what products you've been either loving or loathing in this month or any month. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mm -hmm. Mwah!